Hi, and welcome to a special space exploration episode of InstaVision. I'm Glenn Reynolds. Well, Rand Simberg is a blogger. He's a recovery aerospace engineer. He blogs at transterrestrial.com, and he writes about science and space for Popular Mechanics, PJ Media, and National Review, among others. Well, welcome. Good to be here. So how much is at stake for space policy and space development in uh, a Romney-Obama race? It, it wasn't exactly the key issue at the debates. No, uh, it was actually more of an issue in the Republican debates, I think, uh, momentarily for, un, and unfortunately because it wasn't <laughs> done very well. But uh, I guess there's two ways to answer that. One is what does it mean in terms of space policy, and that's unclear because Romney doesn't have one. His policy is to get a policy and he's got top men uh, who are going to do that for him after the election. Uh, Obama has a policy, uh, which is actually one of the best policies we've had since the end of Apollo. Yeah. Tell uh, people, tell us about that a little uh, bit for our viewers who don't know. Well, it's, it's basically, it's sort of uh, a surprising policy coming from somebody who's you know, tried to take over, wants to take over 160 economy with, the, with health care and all this other stuff, but for some reason he decided that the government doesn't have to be intimately involved in space and he's going to actually let the private sector handle it in terms wait, of wait, getting this, people to and from orbit. This is shocking. It is. Where does he get an idea like that? How did it penetrate the bubble? My, uh, my sense is that he doesn't care about space. If he cared about space, we'd be in trouble. But, but we're so we're lucky. We're right, lucky we he doesn't care about not space. care about health care. Yeah. Uh, well, that, no, it is interesting, and it's created kind of an interesting backlash. I mean, a lot of conservatives who normally favor free markets have actually come out against all this stuff, and they're, they're, there's a lot of national greatness talk, a lot of uh, you know Apollo nostalgia and stuff. Uh, what gives with that? Well, well, it is a lot of that. There, I always say that there's like three elements to it. One is is all this Apollo nostalgia, and national greatness. In fact, Ryan. Paul Ryan is, was talking about that in Florida last week, how this, this typical Republican nonsense that civil space flight, human space flight is somehow tied into national security, which it hasn't been in 40 years. Um, but, you know, he, Paul's a smart guy, he's educable, and maybe we'll, we'll be talking to him after the election. Well, what's the saying? That, I think you quoted somebody as saying that uh, Republicans think uh, free enterprise only works uh, within the atmosphere, and Democrats think it only works outside the atmosphere. Yeah, or something. something like that. Yeah, the, <laughs> Uh, it's actually a Jim Muncy quote uh, so, from from when the policy came first came out, uh, but that that is that's so that's one factor. The the other factor is just a visceral, you know, you know, antibody reaction to anything that Barack Obama does, right? <laughs> Which is understandable, right? You know? So you know, I can sympathize with that. But but if you actually look at the policy, you know, you have that's to kind of get past that. It's not bad. Uh, and the and the third thing is just pork. You know, right. people's rice bowls are being broken. Right. Well, that's always big. Now, you were in New Mexico last week at the Personal Space Flight Symposium. Uh, what were some highlights from that? What were people talking about? Well, primarily what people are talking about is, is the progress that's being made on the private, you know, on the commercial front. Um, Virgin Galactic is probably, you know, says they plan to do powered flights this year. If not, if not this year, then early next. Uh, X-Core has slipped a little bit. They had hoped to have air under the landing gear of the Lynx. Uh, by the end of the year, now they're, you know, Andrew Nelson says, okay, or, you know, January, February. Uh, I haven't been up there to see their latest progress, but it, the airplane seems to be coming together. Um, so, so we're finally eight years, you know, after the winning of the X Prize. We thought things were going to be happening faster than that, and they finally, they finally are. Uh, SpaceX was there talking about their the recent uh, flight to the space station and you know some of the issues they had with that with the engine out, but but clearly, I think. You know, Jeff Faust had a, a good piece in this week's uh, issue of the Space Review, you know, reporting on the symposium, and, and he said it's, it seems to have, a lot of the skepticism seems to have dissipated. Yeah, that, when I see all this going, I mean, I was writing about this stuff going back in the 80s, uh, and when I see it happening, I feel like a cut-rate version of the Emperor Palpatine, and by cut-rate, I mean that everything is proceeding as I have foreseen, just a lot slower. Uh, but now there is a lot of ferment in the private space companies, and in fact, although you know, a lot of the Obama space policy is basically paying private companies to do things NASA used to do on its own. Uh, we seem like we're getting closer to the point where private demand is going to actually outrun government spending. And, and where are we on that? Uh, we may not be that far in terms of human space flight. I mean, uh, one of Virgin's, you know, goals is, you know, they're always, Steve Isakowitz, who's their new chief technical officer, you know, puts up a chart, and so is George Whitesides, the CEO, says, you know, 528, what's that number? It's the number of people who have been into space in history. 
He says, we want, we're going to double that in the next two or three years. Wow. That's pretty awesome. How's NASA responding to this competition? I mean, they're a government bureaucracy. Those don't, they don't usually like competition. Well, NASA is not you know, a monolithic entity. Uh, a lot of people at Johnson Space Center are very, you know, certainly the ISS crew was very happy when they saw the Dragon there in May. They said it had that nice new car smell. You know. <laughs> and uh, so they're, they're certainly won over. They, they, they see this as, this as their fastest, you know, best way to get out of the Soyuz and back, back into space. On the other hand, Marshall's probably not taking it very well. <laughs> now, what sort of new ventures are we likely to see over the next few years? Well, I think we're going to see, well, obviously we had planetary resources. It's not clear exactly what, how soon they're going to be doing what, you know, other than just putting up the telescopes and looking for, for asteroids to mine. Um, I expect, you know, Moon Express wants to put something up on the moon uh, soon to try to win the Google X prize, but also to start mining the moon. Uh, Bigelow is probably going to start putting up facilities now. He's started. He laid off a bunch of people a couple space of years ago in space. Space. Well, he doesn't. <laughs> he, he is a hotelier, but he doesn't. He doesn't like to call them space hotels. He says these are. I'm. I'm a commercial real estate developer in space. I put them up. You do whatever you want with them. And he has several what he calls sovereign clients, which are other governments who are very interested in that. All he's been waiting for is somebody like people like SpaceX or Boeing. Uh, you know. To com come up with a way of getting people to and from. So now you can have a condo in space, not yep. just in Boca. That sounds awesome. Uh, last question as we look, look at the presidential map. Uh, is there any influence? Are there states that are going to benefit more from Obama versus Romney on this, and it's going to affect any votes? I mean, people campaign in Florida. They talk about space. But now that they've laid all the shuttle people off, I don't know how many votes are involved. Uh, it's really hard to say because, again, it's not clear what the policy will be. I think the biggest, if, from a space policy standpoint, the biggest issue of, of Romney versus Obama is whether or not we're going to have an economy. <laughs> you know, right. Because right. if we don't have an, if, if the economy implodes because we continue on the path we're on, we're not going to have private or government space. It's just not going to happen. So I think that that's got to be the most important thing in any space advocate's mind going forward. I think that when Romney's, you know, Romney's a smart guy to the degree he cares about space, and I think it's quite possible that Ryan, and I hope, in fact, it will be Ryan, you know, because we have good contacts with, with Ryan's people, uh, is a smart guy. And when he looks, he's going to inherit the same kind of mess that Obama inherited from the Bush administration, because space policy is perennially a mess. Uh, it, it's a little less messy now than it was, but Congress managed to screw it up uh, by trying to resurrect Constellation. So we have this SLS that just slipped again. It slipped out to 2018 to build this rocket. It's going to cost tens of billions of dollars, and there's no money for the payloads for it. And it's only going to fly once or twice every yeah, couple, we've been couple there and years. Done that, right? Yeah. yeah. So, so, so they're going to inherit the same mess that Obama did because it basically Congress has insisted on resurrecting Constellation without providing the money to pay for it. So they'll, they'll come in and they'll look at it and they'll say, well, especially if you have sequestration, NASA's got to figure, come up with uh, a couple billion dollars, I think. And obviously, to me, the big target would be SLS. Right. Uh, the so-called Senate launch system. Yeah. Um, well, in fact, what, one thing that did happen in Las Cruces, which was kind of surprising, was that uh, last week was in his valedictory Address Bob Bob Dickman, former General Dickman, was the head of the AAA, and he the Aerospace Industries Air, Association. Aerospace, yeah, it's an Aerospace American Institute of Aeronautics and Astronautics. Right. Yeah, uh, AIA is a different thing. Right. Sorry. Makes but uh, so he so he he's stepping down. So in his valedictory speech, basically he kind of let it all hang out, and he said, "Look, you know, I've been a, he's he's been skeptical in the past, but he's clearly a believer now in the commercial space," and he said. SLS doesn't make sense. You know, we should not be, you know, we, we shouldn't be worrying about, you know, trying to worrying about how do we have food for Mars right now when we don't have any way of reasonably getting there in the next 15 years, or 20 years. You know, it's not even on the agenda. Uh, but you know, things are changing so fast. But, but the point is that he's he, what he said would have been heresy. Well, even a year ago. All right. Well, the things are changing. You know, one of the things, you, you want stuff to be sustainable. And at one level, it has to be politically sustainable. But the great thing about things that actually make money is they don't have to be politically sustainable because they're self-sustaining. And I think they're that's, that's sort of the lesson. That's right. Well, thanks so much for taking the time to talk with us.
This is Rand Simberg. He blogs at transterrestrial.com and he writes about science and space for Popular Mechanics, PJ Media, National Review, and well, you'll just find him all over. Just Google Rand Simberg now and then and, and there'll always be something interesting. Meanwhile, we hope you found this interesting. Thanks for tuning in or stopping by or whatever it is you do on internet TV. Uh, anyway, we'll be back next week. In the meantime, have fun on the internet. Thanks.